Corvette's engineering legacy traces back to its inception when the godfather of the Corvette, Zora Arcus Duntoff, laid the groundwork for a relentless pursuit of automotive excellence. This commitment to innovation has been a defining trait throughout its history. Throughout its storied journey, only five individuals have held the prestigious title of Corvette Chief Engineer. Taj Juchter stands out as perhaps the most influential since Arcus Duntoff. Juchter's vision and leadership modernized the Corvette, steering it through five generations, and ultimately realizing Arcus Duntoff's 60-year-old dream with the groundbreaking mid-engine C8. As we celebrate his remarkable contributions, let's take a look back at his journey. I was super proud of my dad. He was a fighter pilot. He used to come and speak to my classes. It was so cool to have the, the cool dad who'd come in and show like a uh, slideshow of refueling over the Atlantic when he's flying to Italy. He would throw himself into situations where the outcome was not sure. We'd go hiking and he'd be, hey, Tash, you think this is a shortcut going off this canyon? Let's try it. But that's the kind of adventurous sort he was. It wasn't always, let's just play it safe. I can only guess what Tadge was like probably in his youth, although I know he must have been taking stuff apart, checking it out, trying things out. Both he and I, uh, in our younger days, were interested in blowing stuff up. Uh, what kid's not interested in destruction and carnage? <laughs> Engineers are wired differently, and Tadge was the epitome of being wired differently. None of my parents and none of my community that I grew up in had engineers. I thought an engineer was the guy who ran the train. You know, it's just, so I had to find that position, and then I, I found it in college just by migrating towards courses I liked. At the University of Rochester, Tadge would pursue a degree in mechanical and aerospace engineering where he graduated first in his class. And it was during his time in Rochester that he applied for a summer internship with General Motors. Well, it caught the attention of the people who worked in the manufacturing facility more than the product design. So I cut my teeth in one of the most challenging environments in the auto industry. And of course, when I showed up, you know, I had zero experience at all, and they didn't give me a plant tour or anything. They just took me out on the floor and they pointed at a conveyor and said, this thing's messed up, see if you can fix it. So you'd think the rest of the story would be okay. After that, I was gonna work for GM. No, it was the opposite of that. A good friend of mine was interested in working for General Motors. He was going for an interview. I said, all right, I'll tag along with you. I'll practice at my interviewing skills. I had no thought that I would actually work for General Motors. And so I did the interviews. They ended up offering us jobs. I said, you know what? I'll go with you. I'll go with you in Michigan. I'll do it for two or three years, and then I'll make my next career choice. Well, that was in 1979. <laughs> By 1993, David Hill had become the Corvette chief engineer, and the door opened for Taj with a brand new opportunity. Dave Hill, to his credit, when the fifth generation was starting to get staffed up, his thought was we should open the doors and try to get some fresh blood. We're gonna need more people. I still thought it was a long shot, but I did bring a list of things that I thought needed to be improved over the fourth generation car and the fifth generation car. I brought that to the interview. I told him my list of things and he said, well, that matches my list. When I began the, the Corvette race program, working for Dave was a young guy, Tad Jector. Uh, who had, I think, uh, great vision and, and great ambition and great skill set. I think Dave recognized that right away. He was really Dave's right-hand man. You know, those two were always scheming and talking, and one of the few people that, it, that Dave really took under, under his wing and, and confided in. His job was to kind of integrate the whole vehicle working for Dave Hill as the chief engineer. Yeah, integrated from a design perspective, engineering, manufacturing, trying to pull the entire product together. If there was something, if there was, that was more challenging than normal or whatever, you would get a visit from Tatch. He was usually always involved with the solution, I would tell you. I watched Dave earn his money, make a difference every single day, and uh, cause the car to be great as an individual. And that showed me completely that it, your job is not 
what you define it as or what your boss defines it as. Your job is team success, whatever it takes. Your job is to get the best product into the hands of the customers. After Dave retired, Bob Lutz was kind of <clears throat> in control and hearsay was that they weren't gonna promote anybody or put any new uh, to replace Dave Hill. So Tom Wallace was a natural plug and play. And we had actually started working on a mid-engine car. To Tom's credit, he came in and saw the job I was doing as assistant chief at that time. And he went to Bob Lutz and he said, Bob, Tadge is the chief engineer. The transition was marked by continued success for the Corvette brand, along with a fresh and innovative approach to help take it to the next level. When I first met Tads, I was a young engineer working on a computer, and uh, it was the C5 body structure, and Tads literally would spend hours with me at the computer, looking at what we were doing, taking our next steps. How many assistant chief engineers spend that kind of time with you? When Tads came to a meeting, or you were able to have uh, some one-on-one -on -one with Tads, you were going to learn something, you were going to be, you were going to be inspired, and you're going to go off and probably develop something greater than you might have thought in the first place. He had superior intellect and engineering training and knowledge, but he had the ability to distill that into terms that anybody could understand. The economic recession in the late 2000s would have an impact on the entire industry and would cause delays in the brand's seventh generation. The C7 was supposed to be a mid-engine car, and we were at the beginning stages, but working hard, it was legitimate, it was supported by leadership. Right before the bankruptcy, I got a call from one of my bosses who said, well, it wasn't even on the agenda to talk about, but as a roundtable item, it was brought up that do we feel right about doing a new Corvette given how much financial strain the whole industry is in? And people said, yeah, it's probably not the right time. And so they just called me and said, cease and desist, stop. But we got through bankruptcy, and one of the first things we got to work on was the C7. The seventh generation Corvette really became a great Corvette overall. It really had humble beginnings. You know, GM coming out of its bankruptcy era, you know, it was like, can we just do a facelift off the sixth gen? And by the time we were done, basically, we had a whole new generation of Corvette. When I first met Taj, I was really struck with how gracious he was as a person. And it became clear to me as we started to evolve our relationship on the C7 that he was the real deal. And he had a knack of uh, explaining things to senior leadership and uh, supporting the people that were working with him, including myself, uh, to get through some of the rough edges and get back on track with the program. We're super proud of that program. Uh, if you look at the design language of the car, we completely rethought the interior, wanted to bring it up to the, the highest standards and really make it a cockpit, make it a driver-focused uh, environment with nothing but premium materials. And so that was our next step up, moving the brand strength up in credibility, trying to be fully competitive with the best cars in the world. It became a great bridge car to the mid-engine car, but it, it one of the things it did was uh, take Corvette into a more refined, sophisticated direction. It created uh, the Corvette as, as not only just a numbers car, but a car that you can enjoy driving and being in all the time. We do say, and Corvette Tedge is a big advocate for this, that we don't just employ technology for technology's sake. It has to make the car better. It has to make the customer's experience better. And so our formula is to constantly trump ourselves. That's what we do. We, we make something better. We outdo ourselves. The next generation outdoes the previous. In 2011, Edge came to us and said, we got approval to do a mid-engine car. There are so many things that Tadge brought to the brand, but I think the final distillation would be the C8 Corvette. As, as Zora had his name attached to the Corvette in general, Tadge will have his name attached to the C8. No question about that. It's his single most greatest achievement in my eyes. I remember seeing the first C8 with him. It's a masterpiece. And it's such a halo car for Chevrolet dealers. And uh, it entered into a new world. We were trading Porsches and Ferraris and all these exotics for Corvettes. And that was his talent, bringing those cars to the market. We knew that we're gonna bring this car out 
against the best manufacturers in the world who'd had multiple generations to perfect their rear or mid-engine cars. And so the fear we lived in is we had to get it right on the very first swing. We wanted to get all the pluses of a mid-engine, but none of the negatives. His composure and ability to be agile under pressure and, and let, allow us to work as a team and him work with us and not dictate too much, but just be right there and make sure we're gonna make it and let us engineer the car and engineer the fix is just a special trait. The pressure must have been unbelievable in meetings to, I mean, you can imagine sitting in a meeting with 25 or 30 guys trying to make a decision on what to do and he has to sort through all that information and make that decision and make it be the right one. This car has always been the, the tip of the spear when it comes to performance, attainable value. It's got this massive, massive following of people that may have nothing else in common except a Corvette that brings people together from all walks of life. We would never be so arrogant as to say we know better than our customers. They're the ones putting their hard-earned uh, money into it, and lots of good ideas have come from customers. Tej also recognized that the crucible of racing provided a vital arena for driving innovation and performance. We are using racing to show the world the Corvette is fantastic. That's why we're in GT racing. That's why the car looks like the car a customer can buy and, and have in their garage. We want that connection. So Taj has supported this from day one. He's always been there to you know, talk about how can production make us better? How can we make production better? He's been an advocate for what we do in racing. He's valued the importance of making the connection between the race car and the production car. And over that time frame, while well, Taj was on the performance and Corvette team with over 130 overall wins and 14 manufacturers championships, and Taj was part of the equation. Obviously, his main job is the production car, but he inspired the team so much to let us know how important it was to the production group to have that team be successful. One of the things that impresses me the most about him is that he has the distinct uh, and uncanny ability to let people be their best. And because those people can be their best, the car is the best. He's got a very gentle way about directing and leading people, and that's always been appreciated. Humble, approachable, and always composed. I worked with Tad so many times in very high stress situations. I've never seen Tad mad, I've never seen him yell, never seen him raise his voice. It's incredible. He has an immense amount of compassion for the people that work on this team. And I remember specifically in my career, I had a, a pretty bad moment. But the fact that he was willing to take the time out of his schedule to come and meet with me, he gave me the biggest hug, gave me all these great words of encouragement. And I think that says a lot. I'm not here to tell you that Taj was the living embodiment of perfection but he's pretty damn close. In April 2024, Taj announced his retirement from General Motors. His final project, the C8 Corvette ZR1, the most powerful Corvette ever created, is a fitting culmination of his illustrious career. Someone once said it's a nice thing to hit a home run at your last at bat. This fantastic ZR1, your crowning achievement, is much more than a home run. In fact, it's the biggest, fastest, checkered flag I've ever seen. Thank you for making our company better. Thank you for leaving us with the fastest and most powerful Corvette ever. And thank you for being a great friend to me and to the whole team. I'm confident uh, he is not one to relax and sit still. Uh, he has got to be busy. Uh, he's got plenty of projects outside of uh, his work life. I hope that he and Mary enjoy some well-deserved travel and, and some of that relaxation. She's been on this adventure with me uh, all the way through. She's been uh, really happy that I found my mission in life. At the same time, I think she's happy that we'll have time to do some things for dreams that we both share. But without her support, you know, there's no way I could have done this job. When you think about Corvette and you think about the top names that go with Corvette, he's one of them. He is Corvette just like Zora was Corvette. If you had to pinpoint one person who had uh, one of the most significant impacts on Corvette history and then bringing up Corvette through different generations and the impact he's had on the car, it would be Taj. In my opinion, there's nobody more deserving uh, that's alive today than Taj for getting that honor. Taj, I have to say, 
working with you over the course of both of our careers has been absolutely phenomenal. You are the best I have ever worked with, and the car, the Corvette, is a result of that. The nature of his work just immediately qualifies as a Hall of Famer. Tadj would be on the Mount Rushmore of Corvette to me. I hope that he understands the impact that he's had not only on this product, but for the people that work for him and for the people that drive these vehicles. I, sometimes I think he doesn't really realize how special of a person he is, and I hope this you know, really shines the light so that he understands what an impact he's made. I think his legacy is up there with, with Zora and the best of them, that uh, maybe even beyond, that he may be the greatest of all time, the GOAT. Obviously, I'm honored. I'm honored primarily because of the people who are in there, you know, the inductees who went before me. I couldn't do the job I did without all of those people and more who've put their heart and soul into this car for all of these years. And so we stand on the shoulders of those giants. The most fulfilling part for me is, and everybody says, what's your favorite part about the job? What's your, you know, what are you most proud of? And most people expect me to say, the car and we're super proud of the car. We obviously love the car, but I think the thing I'm most proud of is the team. Uh, not only did he not disappoint, like you often hear when you meet your heroes, he exceeded. And to watch and learn from him has been something that I'll always cherish. We're all gonna be talking about this even after we retire and are, and are gone, how great it was to work with a legend. For his visionary leadership and innovative contributions to Corvette's legacy, we welcome Taj Juchter into the Corvette Hall of Fame.